ಹರಿಸ್ತುತಿ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಟೆನ್ ಯದ್ಯದ್ವೇದ್ಯಂ ತತ್ತದಹಂ ನೇತಿ ವಿಹಾಯ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮಜ್ಯೋತಿರ್ಜ್ಞಾನಮಯಾನಂದಮವಾಪ್ಯ ತಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಅಸ್ಮೀತ್ಯಾತ್ಮವಿಧೋಯಂ ವಿದುರೀಶಂ ತಂ ಸಂಸಾರ ಧ್ವಾಂತವಿನಾಶಂ ಹರಿಮೀಡೆ ಅನ್ವಯ ವೇದ್ಯಂ ಯತ್ ಯತ್ ತತ್ ತತ್ ಅಹಂ ನ ಇತಿ ವಿಹಾಯ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮಜ್ಯೋತಿರ್ಜ್ಞಾನಮಯಾನಂದಂ ಅವಾಪ್ಯ ತಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಅಸ್ಮಿ ಇತಿ ಎಂ ಈಶಂ ಆತ್ಮವಿಧ ವಿಧು ತಂ ಸಂಸಾರ ಧ್ವಾಂತವಿನಾಶಂ ಹರಿಮೀಡೆ ಸಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮಜ್ಯೋತಿರ್ಜ್ಞಾನಮಯಾನಂದಂ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಫುಲ್ ಕಾಂಪೌಂಡ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಹೌ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಬೇಸ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ವೇದ್ಯಂ ಯತ್ ಯತ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿಫೈಡ್ ಎಂಡ್ ನೋನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ನೋನ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಫೈವ್ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ತತ್ ತತ್ ಅಹಂ ನ that is not me or i am not any of that iti vihaya negating those uh, which are known by objectification then swatma jyotir jnanamaya anandam swatma jyotihi jnanamaya anandam swatma jyotihi means that which is self revealing self effulgent that which is jnanamaya means of the nature of knowledge itself because everything else is known by this and then anandam means limitless joy this avapya knowledge being gained then further to that tasmin asmi iti in that knowledge i am of such nature iti in this method yam isham that lord who is viduhu known and understood atma vidaha by the wise or by the knowers of the self so that brahman i meditate upon or i offer worship tam samsara dhvanta vinasham hari meede i worship that hari the destroyer of ignorance which causes samsara so so upasana was told in the earlier shloka which is for a madhyama adhikari and then um it was said all that is here is brahman and understanding that brahman as i i am aham brahma asmi after this now how can uh, shruti say brahman is nyayati tah which means brahman is that which transcends any form of objectification in the form of clearing this doubt is this verse 10 yad yad vedyam tat tad aham na iti vihaya and further this uh, shloka also explains a method for meditation by a process of negating everything that is not the i so as i said earlier upasana for a madhyama adhikari was mentioned in the previous shloka and then now when we observe the worldly behavior in people it can be seen that they have a pressure to keep talking or eating or watching something nahi kaschit kshanam api jatu tishthati akarma krite says bhagavad gita by nature itself a human being cannot remain still so to such a mindset which is more restless 
Acharya says, whatever you do, you see or you eat or you interact with whosoever etc. There Acharya's Upadesha is practice to look upon everything as Brahman that is by superimposition. Then subsequently by habit uh, the mind you know will be habituated and in everything you will start seeing Brahman. Further to that the mind will gradually begin to drop the object thought and then it will associate with Brahman thought. So then the more the mind associates with Paramatma, the same mind will begin to feel a certain lack of desire, a lack of want to the object. Then at such a stage, Guru says, Yadyad Vedyam Tattadaham Na Iti Vihaya Swatma Jyotir Jnana Mayanandam Avapya Until now, you conditioned the mind to look upon every object as Paramatma. Alright, then besides that, now when you use your eyes and look or you smell something or you taste something or you hear something, or you touch any object, you do understand that it is not me. Why would this happen? Now, when I look at an object, I refer to it as this object, idam. If the object is far away, I say that, tat. Now, you reflect upon your expressions. I say this or that when I refer to objects but then I never say I or me. Any object which is precious or irrelevant it may be like for example even a garbage bin then we uh, mention it as this is waste. Or I say, this is expensive, this object is a gem or that object is fake. Or I say, this is a virtue, that is unpleasant, you know, these kind of expressions. So, in all this, which I refer to as that, what happens is, when I go closer to that, then that object itself becomes this because the distance is now uh, nullified. So, which was this becomes that and everything referred to as that can become this. So, now with more Ishwara through association, this person, the sadhaka, does not like most of the objects so then the Acharya is teaching him and asks him to say Yad Yad Vedyam Any object and every object which is known and perceived or even if it is any situation I interact with or anyone I come to contact with then say that it is not me Aham Na and drop it. So, in this way, you are asked to meditate, do dhyanam by saying, this idam ahamna is not me, that is not me, tat ahamna. Now, in the earlier shloka, upasana was, that is me, this is me, everything is me, Brahman. Now, keeping the me or I, Mama, Mom, Aham, keeping that, this and that is asked to be dropped. Idam, Tat is asked to be dropped by you by saying, this 
is not me idam na mama that is not me tat na mama so yad yad vedyam tat tat aham na iti vihaya so now the question is why should i drop the object identification with me the answer is because it will not give you lasting happiness any object identification will not give you lasting happiness so anything which is referred to as this idam or i am in the world and anything referred to as that tat which is outside of me is not going to give any happiness always that is the happiness may be short lived but it is not permanent so that which is not you or i tvam or aham it will not give you lasting happiness as long as you have desire for the external objects you will connect or associate with them so if your desire for the external objects reduces then you will drop them like for example people collect marbles pen pencil chalk etc as a child then in high school or undergraduate the same things they will throw away because desire changes so for the same object the same person has a different uh, desire or has lost desire which means as long as we like as long as we like something we have desire for something until then we will possess them keep them but we will drop the same object as soon as we lose desire for them in all this we always have some desire only to our own self liking anything else is subject to change now when you examine the world a human being or a person will never accept any error in his or her own self like for example a dress that you wear as a young child during your growing years say about 3 years later you will say the dress is small or you will say the shoe doesn't fit me you will never say i have grown taller or my feet has grown longer such is human nature so all this explanation is to point out that always we love our own self truly but we don't know so so that self is described as swatma jyotihi jnanamaya anandam avapya upon understanding this love that we have for ourself then the next question would be what is it that i love in me so then when you deliberate like this for some time you will find that which always is and shining without seeking any connection with any of the senses is what i love now even in darkness i know me i am aware of me without the necessity of light which means in order to know me myself another object is not necessary so that self revealing atma is established by the words swatma jyotihi jnanamayam anandam that anandam avapya avapya is the result so let's go back to this swatma jyotihi now by a process of negation upon inquiry about the self 
there is a process which is taught in Taitriya Upanishad. So, according to that, I understand gradually that this body is not me. Then I deliberate upon the prana. And then I understand prana is not me. Then I look upon the nature of the mind. Manas is not me. Then I understand the senses are all not me. Then transcending these and existing as the indweller within me is the light of knowledge of the self. Swatma Jyotihi. Now this in uh, Adi Shankaracharya's uh, Brahma Jnanavali Mala. It's a very beautiful composition of about 21 verses. In the last verse he says, Antar Jyotir Bahir Jyotihi Pratyak Jyotihi Parat Paraha Jyotir Jyotihi Swayam Jyotihi Atma Jyotihi Shivosmyaham Which means who am I? Shivaha Asmi Aham. Atma Jyotihi Shivaha Asmi Aham. I am that auspiciousness, that auspicious one, which is the inner light, Antar Jyotihi. It is the outer light, Bahir Jyotihi. Then it is the Pratyak Jyotihi, the indwelling light. It is higher than the highest, Parat Paraha. Jyotir Jyotihi, it is the light of all the lights and by itself it is Swayam Jyotihi, self-luminous and that is me, Atma Jyotihi, that light is the self. So this is, uh, the, this verse brings out the truth of I which is the self-revealing consciousness, Swatma Jyotihi. And in this understanding is I, Tasmin Asmi, Iti, in this way, Atma Vidaha Yam Viduhu. Uh, who are the knowers of the self in this way? They are the Atma Vidaha, the great scholars who know the self. How do they know the self? As the source of all the lights. That is the self. So, other than this body-mind-sense complex and all the objects, within me as the indweller is the self, that is asmi, iti, they know. So, tam samsara dhvanta vinasham harim ide, that indwelling self, the light which lights up everything, because of which everything else is revealed, unto that uh, Brahman, I offer my worship. Here, see, uh, you have to notice how a Krama is taught for Dhyanam. A structure or an order, you can say, to uh, meditate upon Nirguna Brahma is taught. Firstly, uh, Acharya asks you to look upon everything that is to be known yat yat vedyam as Brahman. Then in all the objects and in all the experiences know that the object is not you and the experience is not you but that which transcends all the five pancha koshaha and that which transcends the three states of experience the waking state jagratavastha the dreaming state svapnavastha and the deep sleep state sushupti avastha transcending all this and existing independently that brahman tat is you tvam asi this is how the krama for contemplation is taught now this is uh, beautifully said in Kaivalya Upanishad as Trishudhamasu yad bhogyam bhokta bhogascha yad bhavet tebhyaha vilakshana sakshi chinmatroham sadashivaha 
So, Trishu Dhamasu means in the three realms. Trishu Dhamasu in the three realms. Yet Bhogyam that which is enjoyable. And then Bhokta the one who is the enjoyer. And then Bhogaha that which is being enjoyed. Cha also. And then Yat Bhavet that which can be and Tebhyaha from all of that that which is Vilakshanaha different and is present as Sakshi witness. What kind of a witness? Chinmatraha in the form of pure consciousness. Pure consciousness also you can say Jnanamayam. That Aham, I am and I am Sadashivaha, ever auspicious. Here, Sakshi is a beautiful word used to explain the I. Now, Sakshi brings out the meaning of what is the nature of the witness itself. Now, generally we say Sakshi means witness. So, what is the content of witness? It means, see, normally we need the sense organs of perception with the mind behind them to see things. But then, the Lord, Sakshat Ikshate, He sees everything directly without the intervention of the sense organs or the mind. Hence, his knowledge is free of the defects or the impurities of the mind and the sense organs. So, with reference to the mind, he is called Sakshi, but by himself he is Chaitanya, consciousness. So, that he is uninvolved in what he sees is implied here by Sakshi and that Sakshi Aham is the content of I. So, in this way, the meaning of Tattvam Asi Mahavakya is brought out. And further, the structure of the shloka is such that uh, the Acharya's teaching is asking you to turn inwards and look at you as the self. So, in other words, Dhyanam in the form of Antardrishtihi is taught in this shloka. In other words, one can say that uh, for those who have gained uh, Vairagyam as qualification, that uh, dispassion which is uh, uh, born out of understanding the self, dispassion towards everything that can be objectified uh, to that, that uh, dispassion is born of understanding and not out of any force. So, for such a person, one who has this kind of vairagyam, this upasana has been taught. Now, before gaining vairagyam, how do you meditate is the method taught in the previous verse. So, like this, this verse is beautiful in bringing out the identity of Paramatma and Jivatma by saying Tat Tvam Asi. That light of all the lights is you yourself alone. It. Yadyad Vedyam Tattadaham Neti Vihaya Swatma Jyotir Vapya Tasmin Asmi Tyatma Vidoyam Vidurisham Tam Sam Sara Dhwanta Vinasham Harimede Namaste